Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here back for episode 3 of the A to Z Ambiorix game, where in the last episode we had just finished up building both Mausoleum of Halicarnassus and Roar Valley, and we are on our way towards achieving a science victory. Let's start right on off with what happened in the start of the late game here. So I uh, finished Colonialism and I changed around my policy cards, because if you remember from the first episode, I was able to be settled on a continent split, since uh, Sweden cities were all on a continent split and I took most of those. So I ran Colonial Taxes to get some extra bonuses on those cities that were on a different continent from my home continent. I then did get a great engineer, Filippo Brunelleschi, who is one of the engineers that provides production towards wonders, so I recruited him and then sent him to go uh, help me finish St. Basil's Cathedral up in my Tundra City. And with that great engineer, I of course was able to finish this wonder, and this is one, once again, one that I don't build particularly often, because I don't often find myself playing Tundra games, but if you are playing a Tundra game, it can be really good, it's basically Petra for the Tundra, so uh, as you can see here, I get some really insane yields in these Tundra tiles, lots of production, some food, some culture, Plenty of good stuff up here in this Tundra City. We then entered the Industrial Era, and I was in a Heroic Age, so uh, quite, an, quite an improvement from my previous Dark Age. So uh, for my policies, I took Heartbeat of Steam and reformed the coinage, and then after that, I mean, neither one of these other ones is particularly good, but I just took uh, I just took Hicks Hunt Dracones, which I always want to call Hunt Sick Dracones, but it's not what it is. But uh, yeah, I took those three and uh, also got another great merchant as well. I then, in terms of wonder building, I finished Kilwa over in Stockholm, which meant that I was getting additional bonus production towards wonders and building, since I was the suzerain in two industrial city-states, so this then applies to all of my cities. And to continue the wonder spam train, I then decided that I would build the Great Lighthouse, because, you know, I mean, why not at this point? And I was also working on building Casa in, in Vasteras. Um, I also did finish the Taj Mahal in my second city, so yeah, we're, we're, we were really producing a lot of wonders, uh, and on, on the same turn, actually, I finished both Taj Mahal and the Great Lighthouse, so whenever you get to this point in the game as Gaul, you can kind of just spam as many wonders of, as you want, because all of my cities had pretty good production, so I was able to build all these wonders in really not that much time. I then finished research on chemistry, which meant it was time to start building research labs in all of my cities, and I also started the beeline towards rocketry at this point, because I wanted to make sure I was going to start completing the projects that are necessary for a science victory. Then I also did finish Casa as well, which is going to give a bonus to the cities that aren't on my home continent, which is quite a few of the cities that I took from Sweden in this game. I then finally upgraded Hermetic Order to get the Magus bonus, which means that I'm going to get additional yields on all of my ley lines based on the number of great people that I have recruited, and since I had a lot of them in this game, since I was the suzerain of Bologna, uh, these ley line tiles actually were pretty good and they only got better as the game went on. Also, to make sure that I was keeping my amenities up, I was being sure to build aquariums and stadiums in the cities that had my water parks and uh, entertainment complexes. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, just making sure that I was building a lot of science buildings and continuing to build a lot of opiums to make sure that I can get as many factory bonuses on the capital as I possibly could. Uh, I did get a very good great merchant. I got John Spilsbury, who gives you toys, which is a unique resource that gives you plus four amenities. So it's basically just another free source of amenities. So I was very glad to be able to get him to help keep my cities happy and ecstatic. And by this period in the game, it was definitely at the point where I could just start running campus research grants in a lot of my cities because uh, there wasn't really much that a lot of my cities needed. I could continue to just build random wonders, but at this point, might as well just accelerate your, uh, your progression towards science victory and run campus research grants. In terms of great scientists, I saw that Alan Turing was available to recruit, uh, and I, for whatever reason, totally forgot about Albert Einstein, so I recruited Alan Turing, and then, unfortunately, the next one that was up was Albert Einstein, so I missed out on him, so, uh, yeah, be a little bit more diligent than me and, and be looking out for Albert Einstein when you're in the later stages of the game. I finished rocketry and was able to start building my spaceport in the capital, so I just put it right next to the capital on this marsh tile that didn't have anything else on it. And fortunately it was only going to take about 9 turns to finish, because at this point the capital did have 177 production, which is pretty strong for a city at this point in the game. Another just kind of funny thing that I did, so I, I recruited Maui as a hero, and Maui has, has the ability to uh, generate resources, so I sent him up to the tundra near these two ley lines, and I just generated a bunch of resources, and for, I don't know exactly what determines what resources generated, but I got three salt resources up here in the tundra, which is pretty funny, and then I eventually was just planning on settling, uh, sending a settler over there to settle some cities. I also did build a second spaceport in another one of my cities, just because having two spaceports is pretty good for spamming out the laser stations. One of the other reasons why I settled this city near uh, where I just made all the salt was because I wanted to build 
Amundsen Scott Research Station, so I settled that city near the ley lines, which had pretty good yields, and then I started building a campus district, so that way I would be able to build Amundsen Scott. Then of course started working on launching my Earth satellite, which finished in only a few turns, giving me full vision of the map. So you can see that uh, this was kind of an interesting map. Uh, Eleanor kind of had her own little continent to herself, and uh, everyone else was kind of spread out between the other continents here. I made sure to improve a source of aluminum because you use uh, aluminum for one of the laser stations, so I improved that in my second city. Then I entered the modern era when, uh, where I was still in a golden age. So I just kept with Heartbeat of Steam because uh, the extra bonus production from the campus districts was pretty helpful in this game. And after passing on a few more great scientists, it eventually will force somebody to take one. And the one that I got, unfortunately, was Mary Leakey, which is the one that gives you extra science for artifacts, which is literally totally useless for me this game. So uh, that was a bit of a bummer. And then I saw after recruiting her that the next one up was the double production towards space race projects. So I really wanted to get this one. But the one thing was uh, there was just a thing passed in the World Congress that made nobody get any great scientist points. So I was going to have to wait a bit longer before I would be able to get Stephanie Qualick. Then change up my policy cards a bit more to just run some policy cards that would maximize my science and production. Uh, if you don't have the extended policy cards mod, I would highly recommend you get it because look at how much easier it is to be able to tell what yields I actually get from all these policy cards rather than just trying to guess myself. I then did switch to my tier 3 government as well. I took communism because I wanted the extra production and I did have some pretty large cities at this point. Uh, so the amount of production that I was going to get from communism was pretty high. If we take a look at the amenities screen as well, we can see that basically all of my cities were ecstatic, which is really incredible, which means that I am getting a huge yield bonus on all of my cities. And if you remember from, I believe it was the mid game video, we did get the great scientist that also boosts the amount of yields we get from happiness. So we were getting um, quite a bit of extra yields just all over the board from having all of these amenities and all of this happiness. I then launched the moon landing, which meant that I was two projects done for the science victory, and I also finished research on nanotechnology, which meant I could immediately start on the Mars colony as well. Unfortunately, I was able to see smart materials right away as well, which meant that I could start researching towards the exoplanet expedition, uh, which basically meant that right after I finished the Mars colony, I could immediately start working on the exoplanet expedition. I also did build a monopoly on salt up here in the tundra, and I of course named it Twitch Chat Salt Company. And then with the goal I had, I had like 11,000 gold at this point, so I just bought a university and a research lab, and then I was immediately able to start working on Amundsen Scott Research Station. And since I had a great engineer still, I was also able to rush it even further, which meant that it didn't really take that long for me to build. This wonder is another, it's, it's on paper, it's a very good wonder, but the thing that I find with Amundsen Scott is that it really just comes too late in the game to actually be useful, because... By the time you get to this point, uh, you're probably already winning. Like, if you take a look at the ribbon on top, I have, like, three times the amount of science as anyone else in the game. Um, and my production was also, I would assume, probably a lot higher than anybody else in the game. So it's a good wonder, but not one that's actually that useful. So real quickly, I want to talk about how percentage bonuses stack in this game. So someone in the Amanator series mentioned that using Robert Goddard, uh, who gives the 20% bonus production towards Space Rage projects, um, if you use him twice, then that should be 1.2 times 1.2, which is not, it's not, it doesn't add up to a 40% bonus um, based on how percentages normally work. But in video games, that's not always how percentage-based bonuses work. Uh, and in the case of Civ, bonuses stack additively rather than multiplicatively. So, so you can see here in the capital, I have a 20% production boost from Roar Valley and a 10% production boost from Amundsen Scott. And these two add up to be 30% total uh, rather than 1.2 times 1.1. So um, if, if they were to stack multiplicatively it should be something like 32% bonus uh, but because of how they work in Civ uh, the percentage based bonuses will just uh, add up with each other to give you the final bonus. Just a few turns later I then launched my Mars colony and was able to immediately start working on launching my exoplanet expedition. And then just for the kind of the fun of it, the capital was already at size 23, but I was able to get a great engineer that gave me plus one amenity and plus two housing. And since I was able to use, uh, and since I had mausoleum, that meant I had three charges on this great engineer. Um, I also saw that the next one up would give plus three amenities and plus four housing, which meant that I could massively stack amenities and housing in my capital. Uh, so I figured I would use them in the capital just to see how big I could get the city to grow. I also do want to mention how good the Quick Deals mod is, so I finally got it uh, after Twitch chat bugs me all the time, but uh, you can see all of these luxuries are available to purchase, and normally you would have to, you know, go through with every leader, see what they're willing to trade, you know, all that, What basically just a huge pain. Uh, but with Quick Deals, you can just sort by luxury resources and buy all the luxuries you want, meaning that it's very easy to get your cities to be happy.
Someone did sabotage my spaceport as well, which was just plain rude. Uh, I probably should have had a spy here to defend it, but uh, I was just kind of lazy. But fortunately, since I had a lot of production in the capital, it didn't really matter. I was still able to repair it in really not that much time. Then, if you remember before, I had formed the Salt Monopoly. Well, the bonus from Salt gives you plus 20% growth and plus 3 housing, so I figured why not make some Salt products and put them in the capital to really help with growing that city as big as I possibly could. A few turns later, I did finally get Stephanie Qualic. Uh, at this point in the game, it didn't really matter that I had Stephanie Qualic because I had already built most of the space race projects. Uh, that's kind of the thing with uh, being this far ahead in science is that you kind of lose some of the things that uh, accelerate your path towards science victory because as you can see from the top, I had over a thousand science per turn at this point, which meant that I was way farther ahead than everybody else and I was basically farther ahead than the progression of great scientists. So. I was already done with most of the projects uh, for Science Victory by the time I even hit the impactful for eight people. And on the next turn, I did launch my Exoplanet Expedition, which meant uh, we had a 50 turn countdown until I was going to win the game. I did get a Golden Age in the Atomic Era as well, and I once again just took Heartbeat of Steam. And you can see at this point I did have Jane Drew as well, which meant I could get even more housing and more amenities in my capital, so I went ahead and used her twice for that. And then shortly after that, I was able to finish research on Offworld Mission, which gave me access to the laser station. So in the capital and my other city that had a spaceport, I just started spamming out as many laser stations as I possibly could, uh, just trying my best to accelerate my path towards winning this science victory. And you can see at the end of this game just how ridiculous my capital was. Uh, I had 294 production and I also had 45 housing and the city was size 27 with a ton of excess food. Um, with all these bonuses stacked on it, it was really good. I, part of me, I really wish that I was able to get vampires this game just to see how much farther I could take this city. I feel like we, we could have had something probably with... I don't know if I want to say over 500 production, but we could probably get, we could definitely hit 400 production on this city and probably even more uh, population as well, which would have been just absolutely insane. But unfortunately, we had to go with her Hermetic Order in this game, which still ended up being really good. You can take a look at the ley lines uh, and see that some of them are uh, really strong. They're giving over 10 production, uh, over 5 science, over 5 gold, so they were still uh, pretty useful for this game. And since I was building all these laser stations, my exoplanet expedition was finished in just a few more turns and I was able to win my science victory. So yet another pretty strong victory on this one. This was probably the, the easiest victory I've had in this series thus far, uh, which is always really good to have. Uh, so we're three for three in terms of winning the games in the A to Z challenge. And fortunately, the next two leaders are also pretty good. But I think the second we hit Catherine, then we're actually going to have some trouble because I, I really I've been fortunate in the fact that a lot of the early leaders are all very good. But uh, once we start to get towards some of the, the, the middle leaders, then then things really go downhill fast. So we'll, we'll see if we can keep up the win. Winning then. But thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.